Excellent. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Excited to talk to you about the journey of the Virtual Career Center uh, in the state of Rhode Island, Department of Labor and Training in partnership with Google Cloud uh, and, you know, how difficult it's been responding to the pandemic, especially on employment and labor side and, you know, the interesting and uh, transformative things that the state of Rhode Island and Google are working on in partnership in, in response to this. So first I'd like to introduce Scott Jensen. Hi everyone, my name is Scott Jensen. I'm the director of the Rhode Island Department of Labor and Training. Uh, and I'm thrilled to be here. I look forward to talking uh, about the good stuff we're doing with Google Cloud, Ben. Thanks, Scott. And Mike Krieger. Uh, hey, Ben, good to see you again. Scott, great to see you again. Uh, prior to joining the Google uh, Cloud Canada public sector team as the CTO for public sector, I was working with Ben uh, on Rhode Island and on this uh, virtual career center uh, project. I'm so excited to be back uh, with the Rhode Island gang to talk about how we did that. Thanks for having me. Excellent. Thanks so much. And I'm Ben White, Google Field Sales Representative for, for State of Rhode Island and, and Connecticut. So um, I'd like to just introduce the, tro the topic here of, you know, the Virtual Career Center with the, the, with the pandemic shutting down many businesses, uh, you know, a, a lot of people who were unemployed immediately and the tools that we had to help the unemployed people were also shut down in our career centers and our, our brick and mortar way to help people. So that's when we started working with Scott and the, the Rhode Island Department of Labor and Training on, you know, how we're going to be able to respond to this, how we can take the, you know, create new tools to help people and, um, and really impact people's lives and help retrain, reskill, and help the employers in our state as well. So, I don't know, Scott, if um, if there's anything you want to uh, bring up, kind of on, you know, in the beginning of the pandemic when everything everything hit, there was large unemployment, and you know, you had to look at a different way to respond to this, and you know why you know how how your vision in, in this kind of was sculpted and and how we all kind of work together in collaboration sure so you know ben i i'd start even before the pandemic and you know i uh i this is the second labor department i've run the first one was in maryland and you know i can tell you that those systems that you described uh to help people get jobs uh namely you know we call them one-stop centers i'm sure uh, in Canada, there's something similar. The idea is there's a, a one-stop shop that uh, folks can go to um, to help get some help with their unemployment insurance, and then also if meet a job coach, uh, get some help getting a career, maybe even have an interview with uh, an employer who's recruiting uh, at the center. Um, I have to be honest and say that that has not been working beautifully in, over the last 10 years. And, you know, uh, there's an old joke in the United States. Uh, hi, uh, Ronald Reagan made it, I'm afraid uh, to admit, but uh, hi, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. Never goes over really well. So our center sometimes felt very government. And, you know, when you're looking for a new job, uh, you know, it, you're not at your strongest and it's not the best day you've had. And to go in sort of a utilitarian space uh, isn't great. Um, just like you said, Ben, when the pandemic hit, um, you know, those centers had to close uh, temporarily, at least they haven't even opened yet as we're as we're recording this. Um, but, you know, the, with COVID, you just it's just not safe. So uh, we had all of these people who were unemployed and you couldn't even go into those centers. And uh, you could think of that as a tragedy. I think we're lucky with our partnership with Google Cloud because we really looked at it like an opportunity. And uh, you know the the virtual career center I think is a real opportunity to do uh, important things differently. So I'm 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 really bullish in the future and excited about our partnership. And and I, I love that quote too, Scott. And I, I think you know taking that from the scariest thing someone can say, you know, it it was a lot of credibility that we had to fight to to pull people into these career centers and. You know, doing something innovative and transformative, you know, with with your leadership and everyone behind it, I think is uh, pulling in the right direction to to change that mentality. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. 
And then I guess, um, you know, throughout throughout the process of kind of collaborating and, and, and working on this, you know, what, there was a lot of standout pieces that, that you were very passionate about. Uh, I know the the virtual career counselor bot, um, the, the virtual assistant that we have on there was a big piece of that. Do you want to maybe talk a little bit about, you know, how we kind of looked at this in a different way and you know what we're looking, that we're looking to achieve? Sure, sure. So, you know, we rely uh, on a free market uh, labor market uh, in both Canada and the United States. And that's a, that's really important because, uh, you know, you have to voluntarily go for a job and uh, companies need to voluntarily hire somebody, but it can be very inefficient. Uh, and the problem with that is you're leaving talented people behind. Um, that's terrible for the talented people left behind because they don't have a good job. And it's just as bad for the company who really needs a talented worker in a role uh, to be competitive. So um, what uh, is important, I think, is to figure out ways to buy, you, by leveraging information technology to make the labor market as efficient as possible. And you know, one of the things uh, that we're doing uh, with the Virtual Career Center is a bot that um, you know we're calling it Skipper here in Rhode Island because we're the ocean state. But uh, it will help uh, bridge the gap between what's available in the labor market and the strengths uh, that a person has. Uh, we're going to be doing some relatively sophisticated, pretty sophisticated data mining to mine uh, the data of a person using the bot uh, for that for that person's own benefit. But um, you know that's a that's a really exciting part about uh, the virtual career center. But also, um, we've always done a bad job of supporting people. It's nice if you know uh, what you want to do, but if you don't have a car and you can't get there, or uh, you don't have childcare, uh, or you don't have a home, a uh, stable home environment, um, you know, an opportunity doesn't mean as much as, it, as if you're supported so you can uh, really make use of that opportunity. And the Virtual Career Center is going to do something great that we were doing really poorly before, which is being able to connect job coaches and supportive service providers on a video chat that can come in and out so you can make really warm handoffs because if you're a, if you're a career coach talking to uh, somebody looking for a job and you win trust of that person now you're going to bring in somebody that maybe can help find childcare. boy is it nice to do a three-way call to make sure that that person is from is uh, comfortable and things are going well with the folks that are gonna help say in this case with childcare. So, um, you know, the video conferencing part of the virtual career center is actually better than in person because you can bring people together, schedule uh, so quickly, bring in uh, job interviews. It's really, really, really important. And, and even supply them that, that basic data about that person before the conversation even happens. And exactly. so that was a great description and, you know, there it might seem like there's an overwhelming amount of technology in something like this. And, and I'd like to stress, you know, that I think we really focused on the mission and how to impact it. And then we kind of filled in the technology on the back as we created this. And, and a lot of that went to, to Mike Krager here on the phone and he was a, an amazing help on this project. And um, Mike, I don't know if you want to speak to the technology aspect of it. I know there's a lot to it. And just so everyone else in the call knows that, you know, on top of the the um, many things the Virtual Career Center does, I'll do a couple, is uh, currently, you know, in states and provincial governments, there's going to be many websites that the workforce and employers use um, to interact with the state. So the first part is really um, pulling all those into one site, then modernizing them so the state has one easy place to, you know, employers and um, employees have one place to, to access all that information and get connected. Uh, a virtual assistant to help kind of run them through it, collaboration and virtual career fairs um, and lots of integration and identity uh, to that. So, Mike, I don't know if you want to speak a little bit to, you know, all of these different pieces, how it all works together and how are you able to help kind of 
turn this into um, a platform like this? Yeah, that's a great question, Ben. And you know, as you mentioned, like we really started with the business problem. How do we help uh, get people, you know, match with career counseling, get them the career counseling they need, and how do we do that in a COVID nineteen pandemic world where you know the career centers are closed? And what so what technology pieces could Google bring to bear? Is really you know uh, we started with that business problem, and you know what we found is we have you know the, the chatbot technology, the intelligent agent skip what we call Skipper. You know, that's a way that we can allow people to continue interacting, you know, outside of business hours at scale. So you know, I think Rhode Island, and, and I don't have the exact numbers in front of you, I'm sure Scott can correct me on this, you know, uh, traditionally had fairly low unemployment with the pandemic that exploded to many times the number of people unemployed. So much more staff would necessarily, you know, would potentially be needed to be able to be responsive to all the, the, the questions. So a quick way to kind of address some of the, the, the initial questions is, uh, with the preliminary bot, um, and, and as mentioned, you know, Skipper is, is going to be uh, is being built to be smarter, and it's going to be developed. And then other technologies, you know, as you mentioned, that that user experience, right? How do we bring together all those various sites that that the state has uh, when it comes to workforce development, uh, various portals targeting youth, targeting you know people maybe uh, further along in their career, and how do we uh, give them a modern user, uh, you know, experience? Um, you know, what they expect from, you know, any kind of commercial website today that's fast, responsive, loads instantly. And then also, how do we power that with, uh, you know, like a, a search, a Google Jobs for Search, what we call our cloud talent solution, right? Make it very easy so when they search for a job on Rhode Island's Back to Work site, it returns the most relevant job posting based on their location, based on the seniority of the role, and, and really gives them what they're looking for. Uh, you know, immediately back. Um, so, so that's another piece of the puzzle. And then, you know, the AI ML piece, I think it's a really exciting, I think it was really Scott, your idea here, where you kind of pivoted into one of our conversations and said, you know, could we use ML, could we apply this? I think, you know, maybe I was even thinking a little smaller and you kind of expanded our time. You know, the bot could actually be powered by ML and it could help people understand which careers they could transition to. So they may be in a, in a role today where, you know, that the market for that role because of the pandemic or, you know, structural changes in the economy that, that those roles are going away, but they have translatable skills. And so this bot could help identify those translatable skills and make suggestions and guide them on a new career path. Uh, and that, uh, you know, that bot can also, as, as Scott mentioned, connect them to, you know, the right resources, uh, re, you know, real people, uh, you know, at the Department of Labor and Training and, and other departments. Um, and that's through our Google Meet technology, right, to enable to power that with our, uh, workspace calendar uh, to be able to schedule all of that and kind of keep, you know, hundreds of thousands of appointments, uh, not on, uh, you know, sticky notes and uh, you know, notebooks, but really in a system where it makes it super easy to just book an appointment and have that meeting and have that interaction. And then maybe rounding it off with kind of some of our Google Classroom technology. So as, you know, you would go into a career center and, and get, you know, training on how to put you know, fix your resume, how to create a LinkedIn profile, and that now needs to be done virtually. So Google Classrooms is going to help bring the career counselors and the trainers together with, with the people looking for that. And then maybe one final piece of technology, and then I'll, I'll, I'll maybe stop with the technology a little bit, is, is Apogee, which is our application program interface layer to really help connect this modern piece to the existing systems in the state, right? Because there's been a lot of investment over decades in IT and there's systems that, you know, contain identity and unemployment and, and other records, which are, you know, quite important to helping uh, the job seeker. So Apogee really then helps you make that connection to your legacy existing systems or even other clouds that you may have those uh, uh, those other solutions running in and bring that all together. Yeah, Mike, I guess I did photobomb uh, that uh, call you guys were, that orderly call you were having with uh, all kinds of crazy ideas. So thanks, you guys, for uh, being flexible. <laughs> No, I thank you for uh, it's, it's really inspiring us and, in, you know, driving the technology further than, you know, we maybe even dreamed of, like, what, what we could do to, to solve this problem. So, uh, yeah, Ben, um, back to you. Yeah, no, and um, that, that, that call was a pivotal point on this. And, you know, I think, I think one thing that we've all shared throughout this is, you know, our passion to deliver something new in response to everything that you know has been going on throughout the pandemic and um scott just with with your kind of background and you know multiple labor um organizations you know things just seem so different in response to the pandemic you know what and and you were 
very passionate about your response to it. Um, how, how did you look at kind of the mission of labor and training and workforce, you know, post-COVID versus uh, pre-COVID? Well, you know, I think when you're faced with a crisis uh, of the magnitude that the pandemic has given us all, unfortunately, um, you know, you, you know, you're either in it for the right reasons or you're not. And, you know, we had um, well over 10 times. So Rhode Island is a small state. We have a workforce of about 500,000 people, a population of about a million people. Um, 250,000 people, half of the workforce, took unemployment insurance in some form or another. Uh, and that happened in the course of four weeks. So, you know, we didn't have the luxury of uh, overthinking things. And, you know, it was pretty clear that two things needed to happen. Number one, those folks needed help getting unemployment insurance benefits. And number two, the economy was going to be scarred. There was going to be a big, big um, effect of shutting down uh, all of the things that we had to shut down just to keep people alive. So, um, you know, this, the Virtual Career Center uh, is meant, uh, you know, to get people back to work. Uh, the governor launched a program called Back to Work Rhode Island. Um, we are, uh, she is leading the charge of talking to companies and saying, okay, look, let's use this as a time to pivot into the new economy. We, we were slowly marching uh to a much different way of doing work anyway so now let's make that change let's embrace um what we have in front of us um, we're going to have to do things a lot more virtually we're going to have to do things with better technology and that goes even uh for when there's a vaccine and even for when we move uh, past into something normal more normal so um you know it just in the pandemic presented these problems in a way that either you were going to deal with them or you were gonna be swamped. And um, we uh, don't really have an option to be swamped. So we all banded together and we worked on it, collaborated with you guys, Ben, uh, and Mike and, at, at Google Cloud. And, um, you know, we're moving forwards. And it's really exciting. Um, you know, we have, uh, you, know, you know, we've had an election here in, in the United States. Um, just a, a vaccine was announced today, uh, within a year, uh, hopefully, uh, we'll be moving into something even better that we can all uh, look back on this time and it will seem uh, funny. Uh, it did not seem funny uh, and does not seem funny in many ways, but uh, we're going to look back and hopefully uh, have made some good choices and things forward. No, I, I totally agree. And, and And one thing I'd like to point out here too with, you know, Rhode Island's success in this is you know, you've, and, and I'm sure Mike will vouch, you know, will we'll chime in here too, but you just seem to have an amazing team and culture, you know, just overall culture in Department of Labor and Training. I don't know if you were sneaky setting that up knowing that the pandemic was, was coming, but if you really want to speak to kind of to the other leaders that are on the phone of just the importance of having that great core team that you trust yeah. and passionate people that are engaged, um, because that was one of the things on the Google side that, you know, once we started interacting and really collaborating, we're like, this, this is the people we want to work with. We want to, you know, you, you sold us on this mission, you know, and, and we wanted to be part of it. And if you want to speak to that a little bit, because I think that's important for, for people to hear. Well, yeah, thanks. Thanks for saying that, Ben. Uh, you know, first off, and by the way, I look like Brad Pitt too. That's <laughs> so yeah, you're very kind. Um, but, uh, I think that uh, people who work in government and partic particularly people who work in the space of labor, uh, you know, unemployment insurance, workforce development in the United States, um, they're not in it uh, because they're making a bunch of money or because it's super glamorous. Um, they're in it because you get to help people. And, you know, there's a, you know, that I, I use that Ronald Reagan joke. Um, you know, most of the time, um, you know, I think uh, government officials uh, are, and government workers are are kind of held back. They're 
you look at the government and they're always the ones saying no, slow down, you know, be careful with how you're spending money. Uh, and those are all very important values that uh, we bring to run in government. But um, really the exciting part is when you get to help people. And, uh, you know, it gets real immediate, real quick in the unemployment insurance context. But I'm telling you in the back to work context, uh, it's even more exciting. Uh, we've uh, been putting together small video clips of some of our participants uh, in the back to work program. Um, and, y you know, when you give somebody an opportunity to react to what can be a tragedy, when they lose their job because of something as uh, as big and beyond them as a as a pandemic, a global pandemic, uh, boy, is it inspiring to see people uh, who are our neighbors and friends, uh, sometimes family members here in Rhode Island's a tight knit place. Uh, you see somebody say, "I was doing this, and I always liked science, and now I'm going to be a process technologist, and I'm going to work in biomanufacturing." And before. Uh, I was working at a great uh, hotel, but that hotel had to close. And now, you know, it'll reopen someday, um, but, you know, we need to help people transition and to see people get taken to having the courage and the, and the inspiration to try something different and succeeding and knowing that you're part of helping them do that. It's a great feeling. And I think that's the culture that you're seeing, Ben, and you're very generous and kind to of describe at the DLT. But, uh, you know, I think it's a matter of trusting in um, the motivations and the talents uh, of the folks on, uh, who are government, who are public servants, because that's really what they want to do. And once you get those juices flowing uh, and they begin to do that uh, and you empower them with great technology, I think you can see some great results. So I'm hopeful that that's exactly what we're going to do. And you guys have been uh, great partners, too. So thank you. And, and and I think, you know, obviously we're 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 glued on helping people too. And and the work that we're looking at here could be helping people long into the future. You know, a a legacy type thing. to you you know, kind of envision this as as, you know, a platform to now, you know, you know, of, you know, a new platform to help labor, help the workforce. Uh, obviously, a lot's gone into where we are now. But the, the question is, you know, where do you see this platform going in the future? Because, you know, things have changed so much in the past seven, eight months, and they, they continue to change at a very fast pace. And, you know, we've We've changed this solution so many times as we've worked on it over the months. But I guess, uh, Mike, if you want to start with, you know, any any thoughts on, you know, where you see a platform like this going in the future, and um, just uh, a great great question. Sorry, uh, Ben, um, you broke up there for a little bit, um, but I think I caught the, the bulk of what you said. Yeah, I mean, I'm really seeing, you know, having worked in the global human resources space and the commercial side in a technology leadership role in the past. Uh, this is about 10 years ago now, you know, I saw how those, you know, systems between employers and job seekers, you know, there was a lot of manual, you know, paper flying around, PDFs, Word documents, uh, job spec being written into forms, you know, very manual type processes. But I really see the futures being really based around uh, application programming interfaces and integrations between employers being able to automatically provide the state with the jobs uh, and the, the types of jobs and profiles of uh, the the candidates that they're seeking to interview uh, and programmatically having that exchange and vice versa with the state and the job bank being able to provide a vetted list, prioritized list with AI of suitable candidates for particular jobs that can be fed directly into the candidate tracking and the applicant tracking systems at these major employers and just making that much more, uh, much more fluid of a process. I'm also seeing a role for, you know, the, the traditional resume is really, I think, Kind of breaking down. Um, there's a lot more video resumes. So I'm seeing, you know, how do how does that, uh, you know, how do we help people create their video resume uh, with a platform such as this? How do we help them record something where it's appropriate? And for some people, it won't be, you know, won't be the right format. But 
but we're seeing the, the rise of that. But then how do you process that on the other end as an employer, right? If you have to watch you know, hours of video resumes. Um, so we think we have some potentially some technology that can uh, that can also help with that. Uh, and then all around, you know, that that more traditional even resume, you know, how do we help candidates kind of produce the best possible document that can rep really represents their skills? And there's you know technology that can help them structure and format it, and and then there's also technology that can give them advice on you know, hey, we the system can actually help you know uh, using machine learning take a look at a resume and, and give uh, you know an opinion. You know, we think the graphics are you know maybe not as good as they can be. It's not as crisp. It's not as well laid out. And maybe you know there's room for improvement, right? To help the candidate go back and, and do some work in those areas where his resume may get you know not as much attention as it could uh, just because of you know fonts or, or, or formats or layouts or what have you. So so that's kind of what, what I'm seeing in terms of uh, in terms of that. And then you know remote work I think is the other big piece, right? So traditionally a lot of the, the Department of Labor were kind of concerned with local employers, but now with remote work and COVID changing that. You know the job market for your local people living in your community it could be anywhere across the country. It could be anywhere global. So you, I think now is the role for departments of labor and training. Uh, Scott, hopefully, it's not too much of a challenge that I'm putting to you. Is to help them maybe even find remote work anywhere in the country, anywhere globally, right? As long as there's a position, they can get you know income, and they're going to pay taxes locally. But I, I, we would see how how that's going to happen, but you know, pay tax in the local jurisdiction. So the role is is I think really going to change, and and the job market really shifted with remote work. And I think that's going to remain, uh, you know, most people who have been serving that most people don't want to start meeting back. You know, so you may see people coming back to the office, you know, once or twice a week, but, but the remote work culture, uh, I think is just going to continue. Mm -hmm. well, and, just, and just to add the one of the other end of that, uh, the, of that, Mike, is the companies. Um, you know, the quicker and the more efficient we can get a really talented person to where they belong, the better it is. Uh, for just how competitive uh, every company's business is. You know, technology has you know, made the world smaller. Um, so it means you're competing with everybody. And, you know, I think in Governor Raimondo's vision of Rhode Island is that if we can, um, if we can give our companies an advantage um, of uh, finding talented people, if our job training programs are more to, on point, we can connect people quicker, um, you know, that's economic development just as much as it's labor and training. So, um, you know, we're excited about that piece of it too. Yeah. And maybe just to add one more piece on, you know, the, the training part and actually helping people kind of uh, expand their horizons maybe to other career opportunities. So one thing I've been looking at over the past few months is how to use uh, virtual reality as an example, right? That's become very, very easy to leverage, very lightweight. And how do you give them kind of virtual career experiences so that they could log in and see themselves being a, an aircraft mechanic or a pharmaceutical technician or whatnot without actually having maybe to go because today you can't, it's harder to go on site somewhere. It's harder to shadow with the pandemic. You know, you have to have that social distancing, but to give them, maybe give that student that's exiting high school, give them that, uh, you know, taste or preview of what those careers could be so that when he, you know, he or she is choosing a career uh, or choosing a college or, or training or, or what have you, you know, they, you have a little bit more than just textbook description. I think it's going to be much, you know, much harder to have the real world in, in some cases um, with the pandemic. But I think virtual reality can help play a, a significant role in bringing, you know, uh, those jobs. And, and there's like a silly similar the virtual job, the virtual office in there where you get to drink a virtual coffee and sit at your desk and move papers around. But there are also very, very serious ones even out there today. Like, you know, you can actually be a mechanic and, and it'll show you the engine and step you through it. You know, I think more could be developed around that. Hmm, cool. Um, and and Ben, uh, you know, maybe also to your earlier point about you know, you know, other solutions. So you know, dealing with unemployment has certainly been uh, you know um, uh, what we've been focused on. But you know, as as was mentioned, vaccine management. We're really seeing kind of that maybe being the next emerging kind of ask of government is how do you securely um, you know manage, store, distribute, track. Uh, the vaccine in your communities and your healthcare providers. Um, you know, how do you give a dashboard back to your executives, your governor, or your uh, premier of you know who's got the vaccine, what percentage, and in, in you know what uh, critical uh, vertical or critical uh, kind of sectors have received it, and what's the way, what's the plan? But I think that's really the the next going to be one of the next challenges. I know that you've been doing some work on that as well, Ben. Uh, yeah, it's, it's an exciting time in government, the same way we never saw 
half of our workforce, you know, all of a sudden be unemployed in the first, you know, in the in the course of a few months, you know, now we're going to be asked to, you know, keep track of vaccines at a national, you know, level and to have a full picture of the pie and understand, you know, sentiment and, um, you know, why people are or not taking vaccines. Um, but yeah, no, very, very exciting time to be working in government. Um, and Scott, it's been such an amazing journey with you guys. Um, you know, Mike and I have both learned a ton and it's it's been great. Um, I guess, you know, open it up to, to any other questions uh, from the room. Um, uh, we're happy to, to answer them the best we can. Yeah, and, and Ben, I, I might just add that it's rare where, where uh, you know, somebody we're, we're talking to in public sector turns around and says, yeah, I want to do AI ML and I want to do all these advanced things. It's it's more often than not that I'm going in there with AI ML and kind of tell that story and, and give them ideas. It's, it's rare that it's the reverse. So it's, it was very refreshing and fantastic working with yourself, Scott, and, and your team. Just uh, amazing, agile team, uh, you know, uh, yeah. Just, Great experience. Often wrong, never uncertain, Mike. That's our view. That that was a fun meeting. Hey Ben, Mike, can you use AI, AI and ML to connect people with you know different jobs and rewarding careers? So like, yes, de yeah, that's one hundred percent what we want to do. <laughs> do it. Do it. I will have to say, yeah, yes, I crashed that meeting, and that was my idea at the moment. Um, Governor had been pushing on something like that for a long time. So, and I told her, no, we have to, we have, we have to eat our oatmeal first. We're working on some other stuff that we can do that. And yeah, she uh, does not uh, back up, back down on good ideas. That's sure. So, um, and, um, you know, I'm sure she, she saw how it, you know, affects both the workforce and the employers all in, all in one platform. And, you know, I'm really, been looking forward to the outcomes and um, the amount of people that this pl this platform is going to help, you know, here in Rhode Island and then, you know, else elsewhere out, you know, in America and the rest of the world. It's, uh, it's a very valuable thing for, for governments to be looking into, um, like I said, both for workforce, unemployed uh, and, and for the employers. Yep. So, uh, saw a question about advice to get started. You know, I think that um, what I would do to get started is really sit down with your team and you know find out uh, you know get get some consensus around what you want to do. Uh, and you know that sounds so simple, but as we all know, it's hard. Like, look. We're going to get people jobs. Look, we're going to pay people unemployment insurance. And then, um, you know, find great partners like Google Cloud, and, you know, really uh, enter into a, a team, uh, you know, a team relationship and come up with what you think uh, will solve that problem statement. And, you know, again, um, that's so easy that's like saying hey all you need to do is score more points than the other guys <laughs> you win but um yeah i mean uh, that that's what we did and don't don't you know don't be afraid uh, people in government will too often worry about well you know we can't do that and you know there's a you know there's a rule against that or uh you know we're gonna get in political trouble uh, about that. Well, you know, bring your comms team in uh, and, you know, make sure that if uh, you know, you're ready to defend um, that what you're trying to accomplish is very important for people. <laughs> that's the point. We are going to serve people and that's what we're doing. It. And, uh, you know, typically, um, if you're being transparent about it, uh, you're going to be able to get through some of those challenges that uh, people are going to right, rightly bring up. You know, if if it were easy, all of this stuff would have been done a long time ago. Um, but um, you know, sometimes we, uh, you know, it's important to to push forward, and it's 
great to have partners like Google, uh, Google Cloud, because um, there is a certain amount of innovation cachet, let's face it, uh, that comes with working with a great company like Google Cloud, uh, as opposed to, hi, like, we're going to build a computer system here at the Department of Labor and Training, and it's going to be really innovative. Um, that might even be true, but people uh, are going to have a hard time believing that. But it's almost uh, it's almost a given when you're working with a company like Google. So, you know, a good partner, a good public-private partner is important. Thanks, Scott. I really appreciate that. And, and um you know, you, you just stayed focused on this the whole way through and things weren't always the easiest through through bringing everything in. And, you know, I just felt, I felt like you understood that to do something innovative like this, not everyone's going to be happy, you know, every second. And you, you handled that or, you know, that whole piece of it amazing. And well, thanks, Ben. And that's a good point. Like, you know, it, it, here's what didn't happen in Rhode Island. Hey, uh, the sun broke through the clouds, and we all like skipped through a field of buttercups. Uh, you know this great work together. It took. There were some folks uh, who were skeptical, and uh, whose it was their job to be skeptical. Like these things cost money. These things you we are accountable uh, for uh, doing this work. So. Um, we had uh, to bring a, a lot of people along with us uh, to see uh, this the vision of, of uh, what was uh, what could be here, and that um, even was true with 100% backing from the governor. So we had to work through with our colleagues, and as Ben was alluding to, uh, you know, it wasn't necessarily easy, um, but uh, you know. Those are uh, important checks and balances. I'm talking about procurement. I'm talking about you know IT governance councils and security about data and all and you know IT budgets, all of that stuff that uh, can slow you down. Um, you know that's I think I always view that as part of the job. It's part of the job, and uh, you know you can have the greatest vision in the world, but if you can't execute uh, on basic government. Um, challenges you know that's uh, we did that we made it uh, i don't think anybody thought it was super fun but we sure did it and uh, i know others can do it as well <laughs> uh, so yeah any questions here uh it was great talking and sharing our here and you know we're we're all here to help and uh, you know reach out to, to to Mike myself and you know I'm interested in in helping help you all be successful. Thanks. Thank you, Ben. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a great night. Bye. -bye. Yeah.